In this bonus episode of Fictional Hangover, we talk about socks in bed being a red flag because psychopaths wear socks to bed, being Sidney Prescott because you don't fuck with the original, and sexy traffic cones. <laughs> in our chat about Burn the Negative with Josh Winning. <laughs> about Burn the Negative is the loosest term that could ever be. It's so Ever. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Fictional Hangover, a podcast about young adult and new adult, and sometimes other, books, series, authors, voice actors, and illustrators that is full of spoilers. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. And today, on Friday the 13th, the time of recording, a spooky day. We're going to talk to Josh Winning, author of Burn the Negative. This is epic guys settle in for some amazing conversation such a good episode <laughs> no <laughs> and we've already started <laughs> oh it's gonna what be a good great job <laughs> wonderful claire is it yes. time for would you rather i think we've passed it a long time ago <laughs> yes yes it's time for would you rather pew 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 pew, pew. <laughs> We're very excited for this edition. In general, just in uh, well, general. in general, yes. <laughs> but we're very excited for this game of Would You Rather because we're joined by Josh Winning, the author of this fantastic book. So thank Ooh. you for joining us, Josh. Ooh. We're so glad that you're here. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for this. Oh, you're not as excited as us. We, no. we're, 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 ca- we're going to be calm and composed. I always sound sarcastic when I say stuff like that, but I really mean it. Like, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I'm so excited. Yeah. Oh, it's like whenever I try and offer sympathies to people, I don't sound genuine. You're like, uh, no, no, I mean it. Hmm, you look too lovely bad today like as well. I'm like that no, when I someone didn't... gives me a present and you can tell that they really want to get like a really positive reaction from you. And I'm just, I've got, I, even if I really like it, I feel the pressure to manufacture this flamboyantly enormous uh, reaction that obviously comes across <laughs> as just completely ridiculous. Oh my God, I'm so excited about these socks. Yes. <laughs> and genuinely, you need a new pair of socks because all the ones you've got have got holes in right. or don't have matching sets. Right. And you really love yeah. them. Yeah, but exactly. it all sounds fake. People need socks. People do need socks. I I would actually dispute that because I don't like socks. Oh. I think if you wear socks to bed, you're a psychopath. Oh no! Don't. Oh no. no. And I'm as if I have to wear socks with shoes, that's fine. But as soon as I get in the house, shoes come off, socks come off. I can't stand having socks on my feet. Same. There's a place for socks, and it's not in bed. Oh no! Completely. No. No. To tell if if you actually ever meet anybody and they wear and they say I wear socks to bed, it's a red flag and you get walk away. out. Walk away. Walk, walk away. away. Just walk nope, away. right out of there. Do not get. Yeah, in which is appropriate them. for this month's book theme. Thank you, Amanda. <gasps> book challenge theme is nope, and of course, every freaking situation in this book is a nope situation. It is. It definitely is, and that is um, why we love it. So we should play. Would you rather? What's our first question? It is. We asked on social media, would you rather start in the original movie or the Netflix series remake? And on Facebook, 80% are going to be in the Netflix remake. On Instagram, they're 100% original, baby. And on TikTok, it's 67% for the original. And we do have some comments which are often helpful in your own response. So Emily on Facebook said I would like to choose neither because I don't want to die while shooting either. To which we pointed out, and this is a very key important point of playing Would You Rather, you are the lord and master of your Would You Rather experience so you can mould your response to however you want. It doesn't have to fall 100% in line to the book. To which Emily responded with, hmm, you make an excellent point. I shall go for the Netflix remake because I know, because I would have done the research and tried to avoid dying like how my character did. That's smart. I like that, that logic. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Yeah, definitely. Bree on Facebook said, I'm going to star in the remake because I can come to it fresh instead of carrying the emotional baggage of the cast and crew deaths. I'd rather be a fascinated fan after the fact who makes it accessible for a new generation of audience. Mm-hmm. So Brie was like kind of the exact opposite. 
Yeah. I like that. I like that she's she's thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> she knows. Brie always yeah, puts thoughts in culture. her responses. Yes, we always have very good responses. And thankfully, Constance hasn't done this as a song, which is, she stopped doing that, thank God. Her response was, I choose the original. I'd be the final girl, Sydney, that survives through it all and watches the dumb people die during the remake. Yeah. <laughs> if you're going to be anyone, be Sydney Prescott. Yeah, definitely. She's be just the Sydney best. Prescott. I love her. Yes. Yeah. Coral on Facebook says, original sometimes are better than a remake. Oh. I mean, almost mm. always. They're almost always better. Yeah. Yeah. Glim Glam Jen on Instagram. The Netflix series remake, but it's all real. They kidnapped me and the other actors and put us in the same situations and filmed us. But what if it's in space? <laughs> well, they locked us in one of those biosphere things and are tricking us. <laughs> Ooh. I, she always goes next level she really really does <laughs> yeah. and I actually I want to go and Claire we did not talk about this in the in our discussion I actually thought this is what happened for like what, just went in space? one no they didn't go in space <laughs> that, that it was all the trick and they were being filmed there was the one scene where like the building starts to like shake and crumble and Laura's separated from everyone else and in my head I saw that it was it was one of those like rooms in like Nightmare on Elm Street it's a Jamiroquai where... room yes it's a Jamiroquai room the whole thing is like t- being turned upside down on the set and she doesn't know that any of this is happening but obviously I was wrong that would have been such a good twist if there was like a Truman show style situation going on i wish i had thought of that <laughs> look maybe that should have been the ending of this book you're friends with fictional hangover now we'll take care of you we have okay. good ideas yeah. well you know when, you know when we eventually well when we eventually do our anthology of um fan fiction homages second epilogues mm-hmm. we'll put that we'll put that in there we will yeah we will amazing so we have one more comment. It's from author friend Real Jackson Ford on Instagram, and he chooses always the original. We have to we have to mention Real Jackson Ford when he comments because he's he's a fantastic human being. He's determined oh. to be on every single episode. Yeah. With brilliant taste. Yeah. He's pretty great. By the sounds of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Josh, what are you doing? Okay. Can I swear? Am I allowed to swear on this Please, for the love of fuck. (laughs) Oh, okay. We're made of swear. You can drop the C-bomb. We don't care. We do like that one. Yeah, we like that one. We're fully accessible. Please do. Yes. (laughs) Okay, well, in that case, I agree with probably half of the comments because in the words of Sidney Prescott, don't fuck with the original. Right. Just don't do it. Yeah. So I would have to be the original. Like, I, I love a lot of what Netflix have done. I love the Dark Crystal series, but I mean, that was a prequel rather than a remake. So that's kind of like playing a different ball game. Um, But yeah, I totally agree. The original is always better. I can't really think of that many remakes that I either A, like or prefer over the original. I have one and I don't (gasps) prefer it over the original because the original is my favorite horror movie of all all time and the new one wasn't a remake it was a prequel or no it wasn't a prequel it was happening simultaneously after the fact i don't know whatever Candyman. i really really loved the new one and how he was have you seen have you seen the new one i don't want to spoil it yeah yeah i have i really i enjoyed a lot of it i loved the um I love the opening with the legend of Helen and how that had become his own myth that had grown yeah. out of the Candyman myth. It was that was really clever. Yeah, that was a good one. I will take that. Anytime one. shadow puppetry is used in a movie <laughs> as well is an instant win for me. Especially if it's a needle shadow, which needles, we discuss oh, a lot. Shadows. We need mm. some needle shadows. In the shadows main episode, everywhere. we need some needle shadows. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think you need to do a cosplay yeah. for this one, Amanda, but all it is is needle shadows. That's all I want. I don't want anything else need- but needle shadows. I can handle that. I can handle that. It's been I'd a little while. See. Yeah, It's, it's been, been too long. While. It's been too long. We need some needle shadows. Doing it. On it. Cool. 
<laughs> what so about you, you, Claire? Would you want would you want to be the original or the remake? Oh, uh, original. Um, yeah, I can't think of any remake. I mean, even on the Would You Rather image, and I was thinking about it, I went, "What Netflix have done? That's a remake or reimagining." That's absolute trash, but the original movies are quite good. And the only thing I could think of was Resident Evil. <laughs> because the, as much as the Resident Evil series gets really bad, <laughs> the first one's really good. And I will defend it to my dying day that the first one is really, really good. But I, I suffered that Resident Evil TV series from front to end because I'd very rarely DNF things. And it's absolutely horrendous. It is trash. Do not watch it. Oh, no. It. Don't waste your time, honestly. Go and rewatch <laughs> something. You're better off rewatching something than you are to watch that TV series. It was rubbish. Oh, so, yeah, I can't think of anything. Is Miller Jovovich in it? No, not at all. Uh, I mean, hey. Lance Hendrickson. She is Resident Evil. Like oh, my she God, is. Lance Hendrickson. He's awesome. Yeah. But not oh, awesome enough to save it. It sounds like. No. no, not at all. You know, I I kind of didn't hate, even though it's not Netflix, a Netflix TV series, but I kind of didn't hate the um, MTV Scream TV series. I didn't hate that. I mean, it wasn't, obviously, it wasn't Scream. But I didn't hate it. It was different. I liked that they they kind of just did their own thing. There's a different mask. Um yeah, it was fun and like it really was quite grisly. Like, isn't there a bit with a guy with a farm sort of thing that happens that's quite horrific? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I yeah. think that's that falls in line thing like thinking about like Wednesday. It's not a remake of the Adams families in any way, shape or form. It's taking a different route around and having that base in it where so I I really enjoyed the Wednesday series. Hmm. So it's kind of that kind of thing for me, the screen, where you know the original, and as long as you know of the original, you'll appreciate this, but you don't need to know the original to appreciate this. Yeah. yeah. I find it really weird that there will be kids who watch Wednesday and have never seen the, you know, the 90s movies. That just is, that blows my mind. The, the, Adam's Family, Adam's Family Values are two of the greatest movies. Absolutely. I can only yeah. imagine that if they didn't watch the original, like, as it was a thing, they would probably be disappointed Shocking. if you come to it mm. after the fact. Angelica Houston is a legend, and she needs to be appreciated oh and worshipped. She's amazing. Goddess. Goddess. I, used, I used to have all of the, well, probably not all, but most of the original black and white Adams Family TV show on VHS. I used to watch Why? all the time it was on like channel four or bbc or something and oh, i used yeah. to record it on and at like 6 30 or whatever and i used to record it and i used to watch them all the time <laughs> loved them i mean that that snaps is that snaps that is snaps yeah i'm making noises <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be an appropriate snap <laughs> yeah yeah yes no i think i think we're all original aren't we definitely yeah Unless but, it's Candyman, but I, I will just be, be in original. all of the Candymans. You'll be in all the Candymans. So we'll even the shitty s- say, sequels will be the original. <laughs> but then they're going to pay us a heck of a lot of money to make a cameo in the remake. If Obviously. we're still alive, heck of a lot. Oh yeah, didn't um, Bruce Campbell? He was in the Evil Dead reboot, so it wasn't really a remake. It was more of a reboot, and he's. He appears right at the end of the credits and just says groovy. Like that's yeah. his whole contribution, which is all you yes. want, really. That's all you want him yeah, to do. That's all, that's all you need. Yeah. Is it, it Sam Raimi? Yes, Bruce Campbell's involved. Is it Evil Dead? Yes, Bruce Campbell's involved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's move on to our second question. Would you rather realize you're actually a murderer or actually cursed? Shall I go first? <laughs> yes, please. If you know what you're doing, I do not. Well, <laughs> I love the logic of like you've realized you're a murderer. It's like you just suddenly, you know, a whole mess of crap's happened and you're like, wait a minute, I'm a murderer. <laughs> wait a second. Yeah, what? There's people screaming. Ah, oh, it all makes sense now. Okay. Blood on my hands. Yeah. I think if I had to choose. 
I would choose to be actually a murderer because at least that's something I can do something about. Like, I, I can just stop killing people. Or Whereas if you're... Keep yeah. killing people. Or keep or, yeah. killing people. Keep killing people. <laughs> you haven't Maybe been caught yet. Yeah, like a vigilante. Yes. Um, whereas if you're cursed, you, you're you pretty much just fucked. Like, the, all the things I've read and seen about curses, you, there's no way of getting rid of them. You're gonna, You're doomed, basically. Yes. And, and like cursed means you're a victim whereas murderer means you're the opposite of a victim unless you start going after yourself because you realize that you're yeah. actually a murderer and then you have to stop yourself from murdering <laughs> that's an no, that that's, that's like... a detective genre <laughs> yeah. horror you are both detective and murderer in that one yes Let's put that on the Nemo Nine More Rhyme or list, man. <laughs> What's that? Yes. Is it a Tiffany song? I touch myself. You can just turn it into I kill myself. I kill yes. myself. Yeah. Do, 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 do. There you go. <laughs> when I think about murder, I kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna rewrite the lyrics to that too. Look, look <laughs> for that. That will happen. <laughs> I'm obviously a murderer. If you're just coming to the show now, like Josh is, there there is no question. I am always the villain. I am always a murderer. So, I feel like we need to caveat that with a PSA that not, not in actually life. a murderer in <laughs> real life. Again, we need to caveat this in the fantasy world. In a fantasy in world, fictional what, murder. What kind of murderer? Like witchy murder or like like stabby murder? Oh no, it's definitely gruesome. There's uh, definitely lots of, you know, blood splatter and gore all over the place. Nice. So you're like you're like an interior designer. Yeah. Who, but <laughs> you know the people who yeah. And I'm I'm using I'm using my victims interior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So many layers. <laughs> so many. God, I'm so glad you're on this episode. This is amazing. <laughs> We love you already. You know us. <laughs> I love you if you're if you're an interior designer murderer. <laughs> I feel like that's a, that's a real niche in the. Uh, it is. It there's is. a gap in the market there. You know, there's not many of us. Yeah. Have you seen those videos where the the artist videos re- reels and stuff where you'll see the like the there was a one I saw where it was. Um, spider-man face and they poured rice over it and then where it landed they drew round and then they took the rice off so where the rice didn't land it was spider-man mask and where the rice did land it was um peter parker a real hyper realistic it was absolutely beautiful now i've got that image in my head except instead of rice you're using blood uh yeah entrails for sure yeah 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 just swinging the intestines round just you know get nice coverage uh-huh yeah like a lasso tiffany Yes. Yeah. <laughs> God, now we have the music set. video to shoot too. It's perfect. All of this and is a set. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's I don't know if I can make together. that one happen, but everything else I'm going to work and, on. And and the judge. So now you're now you're on like an interior design TV series, and the judge is Bruce Campbell. And if he <laughs> likes it, he says groovy. Groovy. And if he doesn't like it, he says cast you out, or whatever he says to get rid of the demons. <laughs> I love all of this so much. This is happening. This is happening. T- trademarking all of this. Yeah. TM. This we is property of fictional hangover and royalties shared with Josh. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm also going murderer, but I'm not going to answer with anything else because I can't be what you've said. You see previous <laughs> statements. Dang. <laughs> You're, are you, can you be like the um, like the carpenter? Like the tradesperson who comes in and does all like the really hard stuff that, that Can we can't figure out. Can you clarify the genre there, please? <laughs> <laughs> in the interior design show, you're the carpenter who comes in and builds everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. I'm the one who's you know splattering the entrail paint on the wall, and you're the one in the background going, oh, "Gotta come in and fix that." So then you come out with your hammer, and then you will murder me and then you'll take uh. over <laughs> this is perfect everything about it is great yeah i'm going to turn your leg into a lamp thank you and oh, your yes goal will be some kind of like 
feature on like a pedestal. I'm gonna have some nice, interesting lights. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I would you prefer have a, a jar of your teeth. Thank you. Oh, you can't see my jar of teeth. It's up there. Nice. Oh, nice. Jar of teeth. Hashtag is that from? Uh, is that from Cat Ellis's Harrow Lake? <laughs> no, those would be in the tree. Oh yeah, of course. Sorry, sorry, Cat. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? You've just invoked the curse of. Mr. Jitters. Oh, nice. Doll out. I, I've seen that on your social media, I think. Awesome. I? Yes. Yes. That's so good. And then I got to act them out in real life. <laughs> and it was great. You act them out in real life and I play with the dolls. Yes. Perfect. Um, what's our next question? I have no idea. Would you rather be a washed up child actor or a suspicious psychic? Beverly wasn't a good psychic in the end. She saw none of that coming, did she? She she really oh, did not. Uh, did, she might have done. She might have done. Are we doing spoilers? Oh, gosh, of course. Yeah. All spoilers oh, right, all the okay. time. All fucks all the time. Go okay, on. cool. Good rules. Um, <laughs> I think she did. I think she kind of. Um, I think she kind of slightly sacrificed herself. You know, like she knew that there was only one way this was going to come out, and it was basically this way, and yeah. she kind of had to die for it to happen. Yeah. I did is Laura love, worth it? <laughs> mm. I guess I she thought she was saving Laura, and then Laura turned out to be basically un she's unsavable. Actually, a murderer, which I love. Yeah, she doesn't have a redeeming feature. Finally, <gasps> thank amazing. you. It's amazing. Rooted for the bad guy all the time. We always do. Hooray! I've seen a few people online who are really upset about the ending. And I haven't like dug into what they were upset about specifically because I don't really need the negative. I burn the negative. Burn the negative. Um, <laughs> but I can only think that they felt that um, they wanted Laura to be like a, a have an uplifting final girl ending, and she kind of gets that, but but you know from a really quite warped perspective, maybe. Yeah, she's the final girl because she's the friggin' murderer. Yeah, what better way to be the final girl? <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. we we are strong proponents of loose endings. Yes. Um, open endings are open endings. Lovable bastards. No, lovable assholes. Assholes. Sorry. Use the correct words. By the sorry, t-shirt. Assholes. Sorry. Lovable, lovable assholes. assholes. Um, and uh, irredeemable characters. Yeah. Those also, are three of my favorite things. Also, we decided that um, the Needleman is the hero because he's been keeping her safe all this time and that um they're best friends and they hold hands with needle fingers and skip yes <laughs> it's precious it is they precious. definitely do that <laughs> yeah no i really like that you see him as the hero that's really fun because he yeah he he's kind of like a, a, a messed up imaginary friend slash guardian angel yeah maybe that's exactly what we said yeah yeah Amazing! I love this. I've not yes. had I've not had any 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 spoilery discussions about the book before, so this is really fun that we can just talk <gasps> about spoilers. We are refreshing. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, have we? I remember when special? Angie came on and she was like, oh. "We can talk spoilers." And we're like, uh -huh. "Yeah." She's like, <gasps> "Oh my god!" Just let it all hang out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, oh, right. There's a question. Um, there's a question. What's the child actor or suspicious psychic? Yeah, I would go for the suspicious psychic every every day of the week. I'd rather be suspicious than washed up. Yeah, nobody wants to be washed up. And like, psychics are, are really cool. I would love to be psychic. I want to yeah. be a suspicious psychic, but I want to be on like a ghost hunting program because Amanda you know how much I love spooky programs yeah and tonight I'm going to be watching I'm sorry I'm not watching Friday the 13th You're I'm wrong. watching I'm, I'm watching ghosty programs there's new episodes of stuff coming out that I'm desperate to watch awesome. and I'm going to be that weird suspicious psychic I'm not going to be like most haunted like oh God, what was he called um, oh um, Derek Nick, Cora Nick? yeah Derek yeah, Cora yeah. With his spirit guide Nick, I saw Derek Akora live once. What an absolute fake! R.I.P. Derek Akora, but <laughs> he was an absolute fake. I'm, but I'm going to be a suspicious psychic on a ghost hunting program. That was that was one of my early ideas for this book was a ghost hunting program with a psychic. Yes. But I ended up 
being something completely different, obviously. But yeah, I, I love the. Yeah, <laughs> we'll also read that one when it comes out. So. <laughs> yeah. Just just write that one up. Bur we'll... Burn the negative. Two. <laughs> burn more negative. Burn more negative. <laughs> burn the negative two. Call on EMF reader. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> You've got to go for some really terrible title that means it's or like when the movie's made, it's going to be like made for TV, and then it's going to yeah. get cult following, and then basically all you can do, you have to do for the rest of your life for a steady income, is do the uh, con circuit. Yes. And be a con artist on the con circuit. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Or a murderer on there. There is a An actual murderer on the con circuit committing actual murder. Yeah. We've just we've got absolutely solid gold ideas here. We really, I need to start writing them down. <laughs> you do. Don't worry. It's going to be recorded. You recorded. can come yeah, back true. to it. Yeah. <laughs> it is all trademarked. This is all trademarked. Yeah. <laughs> If you do end up writing another book using all of these ideas, please yeah. like throw like just scoot fictional hangover into it. Mention us yeah. in the acknowledgments. Just, yeah, you know, throw throw us a bone. You'll hear us squeak if that ever ha when that what that happened once and we squeed loud. Yeah. Well, that no happened. Way. That happened with Amy McCaw. She wrote some of our things that we discussed in our episodes into her book. It was fantastic. That's so cool. <laughs> Yeah. You've been we immortalized were... in print. Yes. Yeah, it's very exciting. It was you amazing. are everlasting. Um, I don't think I've answered this question. I don't want to be washed up. I think I did say that, so maybe I'm lying. I don't want to be a washed up child actor unless I am also actually a murderer. No. That's, that's the only way. Nobody then... wants to be washed up. I don't want to be pathetic. I want to be amazing. You could be a washed-up child actor that reinvigorates their career through reality television right, yeah. in the form of murder. Yeah, okay. And then there's a true crime like series where they're trying to catch me. And then, and then I end up catching myself and then it goes back <laughs> into what we were talking about earlier and just everything so, is wrapped up on itself. And then for life, all you're doing is the true crime cir circuit. The true crime is... con circuit in which yeah. I am actually a murderer, murdering everyone, and then I move on to the next one. Yeah. <laughs> and they have to keep doing more cons because they're trying to catch you. <laughs> but they can't. And then, yeah, you are uncatchable. Mm hmm. I do. I feel like, yeah, the washed up child actor, I feel like there's actually, there is something quite nice about being. The potential to being being washed up. I feel like you could just not give a shit anymore. You know, just That's watch true. daytime TV, live in your pajamas. I mean, this is some stuff I already do. I was going to say, stop yeah. saving my life. <laughs> yeah, I am currently wearing pajama pants. I love right, right I think now, we all are. Yeah. I've been at work all day, and I work at home, so I'm in park pajama pants. <laughs> yeah. You just can't stand up on Zoom because then everyone will know. No, yes. no, you never stand up on Zoom. No, no. It's not a good idea. <laughs> okay, next, next question. question. <laughs> would you rather? <laughs> would you rather infiltrate a prison in costume, or sneak onto a movie set whilst on the run from the police? I would probably do the infiltrating a prison thing because i like a challenge mm -hmm. uh i think it'd be quite interesting um and yeah i think i mean i'd be terrified i'd be pooping my pants sure. but i'd get caught and then they wouldn't let me leave you know um but but you know yeah i think it'd be quite a fun little day out <laughs> 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 and what would your costume be? Oh. Um, well, it wouldn't be an inmate because then you really would get stuck in there. So it would have to be like <laughs> a cleaner maybe or like a like an FBI profiler. I'm thinking about like Mindhunter, something mm -hmm. like that, something very glamorous. Mm -hmm. Why did I like instantly think a giant panda bear costume? I don't you know. Just, <laughs> okay. just like straight to Halloween costumes, but the terrible yeah. ones. I mean, you could be like the you've you've come in to entertain everybody, 
you know like there's pred like didn't johnny cash used to be like a prison yes entertainer? yeah um but i feel like that would be like the easiest way to get in maybe not you if you did it, it in drag <laughs> oh. <laughs> you're wearing like the sexy themed halloween costumes you're like a sexy sexy traffic cone or something stupid like that <laughs> traffic cones are sexy <laughs> they're so sexy <laughs> <laughs> that would not be a good costume to wear <laughs> into a prison. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that sexy traffic cone was the first thing that popped into my head, if we're being honest. Um, traffic cones aren't sexy. I'm sorry I said it. Or traffic cones. <laughs> I'm sure they're sexy to each other. <laughs> so judgmental. Yeah. Remember, Amanda, we don't kink shame on fictional handle. That's true. We do not. If you think traffic guns are sexy, more power to you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just picturing like a Madonna situation now. <laughs> That's what to I it. see too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the sexy that. traffic cone costume. <laughs> is you see, my, my problem is I live near Newcastle, which is a huge like stag and Hindu place. And there is not a Saturday night when a traffic cone doesn't end up on the top of a monument. Yeah. You know, is it a good night out if a traffic cone isn't on the top of one of the one of the statues? Or there's it's one not. in Edinburgh, which every time I've gone to Edinburgh, there's always been a a, 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 a traffic cone on its head. Um, <laughs> or you want just... you could use it as a musical instrument. You know, you turn it the way around, do a you bit could. of do 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 do. It's really heavy yes. though. Make yeah. loud I've never been, you know, a person that's ever put a traffic cone on their head. You're the one going out every Friday night putting traffic cones on statues. It's you. It's you. Is, I've got to, I've got to do something and I like, come down off the recording because we we usually do it at eleven o'clock at night. So yeah, you know, oh. right, finish recording the podcast. I'm gonna go and put a traffic cone on the statue's head. Uh huh. Yeah. That's how I wind up. Yeah. Have a potion. Go to bed. Yeah. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. It's a complete side note. I'm just going to say I'm sneaking onto a movie set whilst on the run from the police. Sure. Because that's easier and I don't want to be locked into prison. Um, I mm. will also quickly answer this question with being in costume because that is all I ever want to do all the time. So, costume. Whether it's a prosthetic nose or a sexy traffic cone, it doesn't matter. I choose the costume. So th this cosplay that you need to do now has to be a traffic cone and then the needle fingers. Yeah. It's not going to make sense to anyone, but, you know, the three of us, we're really going to enjoy it. <laughs> it's just going to come with the comment of, please listen to the episode. It's the only way it will make sense. The only way. And even then, you're going to have questions. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Last would you rather. Oh, my God. As an actor, not actually being murdered, which death would you rather experience? Amanda, I know it's not going to be spider bites for you. It's not going to be spider bites. You've had a full-on wig during the episode. I did. Mm. Oh, really? I would choose any of the other ones. Oh, yeah. Not spiders. The spiders, yeah, the spiders um, I threw in there just as like a little sort of like, if you don't like spiders, this is going to get you good. <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of spiders, but, you know, I actually recently, just this past weekend, I was at my sister's house and my five-year-old nephew was saying how scary spiders are. And I was trying to, like, be the big grown-up and sort of, like, broaden his mind and be like, no, it's fine. Like, don't live your life in fear. It's fine. And um, and his reasoning was, but spiders have so many eyes. Which, yeah. And then you peed scary. your pants. Yeah. <laughs> Spiders are perverts. They're always in the bathroom as well. So they love to just sit and watch you, don't they? Yeah. Same as moths. Perverts. Claire is terrified of moths. Yeah, I can't moths. believe you but just like brought the them into man. the conversation. But I like cryptids. Mm, yeah, the Mothman. Is that a Richard Gere film? The, um... I forgot what it's called now. There was a Josh Hartnett. Mothman, Mothman Prophecies. Man prophecy. That was, yeah. Was that, was that Josh Hartnett? I... I well, no, now I gotta get I IMDb know. up. It's one um, that I never watched. It's a bit silly. It's good. Oh, okay. It's not. Um, I am going to choose being sucked into the floor as my 
uh, murder because that one makes like the least sense and is also terrifying and I can also just imagine myself as being like frozen in carbonite you know and like mm. and like I'm there in the floor but I've been sucked in and, and I'm dead I like that one the yeah. best and then one day someone will find you and you'll be like the coolest antique in the house yeah yes put on, put on display by the front door uh-huh i am the front door <laughs> <laughs> can we just get you out every halloween <laughs> yeah. like one of those giant yeah. target skeletons where'd you get that from you don't want to know don't you don't want to know <laughs> the crowd. what are you picking claire but I'm not going to go buried alive because that's like things being the walls. I do not like things in the walls. But you're okay with me being in your floor? Yeah, that's fine. It's just you. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'll just stop. Shut up, Amanda. Just kick, just kick me. Drowning scary. Don't particularly want to be stabbed or hanged. <laughs> how am I going to get to... Somebody got decapitated. Uh, that's how seriously you're considering this. Of course. I've got the list in front of me. Um, somebody in the street I grew up with was decapitated at work once. That was, Well, of course, maybe the Once? One. Just the but one they time? they were decapitated. That yeah. was really creepy. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's yeah. horrible. Um, um, Where did you work? It was, it, I was only a kid. It was the, the neighbour across the street. It was... Oh. Uh, an, I don't know. Oh. Some some factory, I don't know. I was only a kid. Yeah. Um, oh god. That'd be like... awful. Like, sorry, sorry, Amanda. Your husband's not coming home today. He's had his head chopped off. He was decapitated. Yeah. Awful. <laughs> I don't know why I'm making light of it. It's terrible. Well, oh, it was. It was. It was one of those. You know, when it was only a small street I grew up in. It was back in the days when everybody knew each other as well. We actually knew your neighbours, oh. and it was the gossip of the street. It's like, oh my. Yeah. Oh. My mum who listens, she'll probably like text me after hearing this and confirm all the details. So thanks, Mum. Uh... <laughs> Please share the details with us. I will. I I'm thinking do, do I have to be covered in spiders or can I just be one bite and then I can hope to turn into Spider Man? They they kill on mass. Oh no. <laughs> I'll go with falling because then at the you know, I'm a uh, I'm going down. Oh shit! Splat. I always think falling would be quite like people do it by jumping out of airplanes. It'd be quite a fun thing to do. Just obviously, it's a bit sad that you die at the end, but it's quite like a a cool. Uh, I don't know. It'd be, it's, it's panoramic, these scenically quite cool. Yeah, it's it's a very ah, scenic. I'm falling to my death. Ooh. Ooh, this is a lovely panoramic view of the earth. Ah! <laughs> I, do, I can't yeah. see it. I can't see that happening. Knowing that your parachute doesn't work if you oh. even have one. Yeah. Not nice. but I suppose being decapitated would mean I'm going to be decapitated and I'm going to go that it's happened on a movie set set in the French Revolution where I'm playing a French aristocrat at, at Madame Guillotine. Oh. And and then it's one of those things where like you know the crow, where somebody actually gets murdered on set and there's this whole thing and then the true crime crime podcasts can go absolutely bonkers about it and then there'll be a movie made about my death and a documentary series about it on Netflix uh-huh. yeah. and it's called <laughs> Burn the Negative and it's called, yeah. yes and then Amanda can come in as a serial killer who does the con circuit. Mm-hmm. And you can murder people on the the true crime concept. So. Mm. Yeah, you just you got to bring it back around. Yeah, it's I'm a, gonna go there. Maybe it's you're called Tina, circle. so the film could be called like Yellow Tina. <laughs> yes, <laughs> something like that. Happens. Yeah. It's happening. <laughs> God, I mean, it's got to be a French name. Well, you know, we'll we'll, we'll French it up, but it'll be Tina. Just sure. Tina. Yeah. I love it. Zutaloi. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I was taught a French root insult the other week, which apparently means down there bits. But in French, it's not a bad thing to call. So- in England, you call someone a cunt, and it's wrong. But in French, apparently, it's nothing. And it's hopefully I'm saying it right. Ah patin. So when you when something happens, you go ah patin. So I spent a long time in the office the other week, sitting next to the lady who taught me it, who speaks fluent French. Oh, so, oh. Is it amazing. kind of like going, oh, minge? 
Um, or shit, but Sorry. minge, yes. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, minge. minge. I like it. <laughs> um, just, my who death. doesn't like shouting minge in another language? Absolutely. Yeah. Which which death are you picking? Have you picked yet? Yeah, I'm going to go with the bathtub because I quite like a bath. But you're on fire! Mm. Bath bomb drops in and yeah. explodes. Near palm, death, fiery Done. death. Done. No, I, so it would be the death from the guest house movie, not in real life. Because in the oh. in the movie, yeah, in the movie she drowns in the bathtub. I think. Yeah, in the TV um, it was a shower cubicle. Yeah, yeah. So I would go for that one because it's the best, most Classy. peaceful, hopefully. Mm. It's a warm yeah. bath. Just be nice and clean when they find you. Yeah. Even if, picturesque. you know, you pee yourself Positives. or poop your pants while you die. Oh, yeah. You'll still be clean. Your, yeah. your, your bath water won't, but you will. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I can just say this. Like, you know, when you get to see the pictures of those gorgeous claw tubbed baths and they're in, like, picturesque picture windows and, you know, your, your limbs are hanging over and people get close and like, oh, no, he's been burnt to death. And then all of a sudden you just see a little poop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so romantic, but it is. Yeah. It's very classy. It's very classy. <laughs> Actually, it's making me think of um, where is Mary? There she is. The cover of Mary by Nat Cassidy. Ah, <gasps> oh, yes. yeah. It's about yeah. a dead body in a bathtub. It's missing okay. the poop. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the poop? It's not visible. <laughs> It's underneath the body. Yeah, yeah. I'd love it if they did put poop in there, but they didn't. <laughs> they did not put poop in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that brings us to the end of Would You Rather. <laughs> this is the longest one you've ever done. <laughs> it's a good place to end. I mean, it's it's probably my favorite one that we've done lately. Oh. <laughs> There's it's a lot of really poop good. involved. It was very good. It's it very good. But now we have other questions to ask, which I find more, hilarious. More questions. Yes. I, ah. think, I think the best part of this is I was like, it's only going to take an hour. <laughs> it's a lie. Every time we say that, it's a lie. You, you know, know when it hits six o'clock, I'm going to get a glass of red wine. Just, you know. Please do. <laughs> please do. <laughs> Near the way to six o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have other questions that are not would you rather, and probably maybe no poop is involved, but we don't make any promises. Poop, poop at your own discretion. <laughs> Healthy. <laughs> it's good for you. Don't don't keep that stuff inside. No, You're the worst type of pains. <laughs> yeah. We've all been there when you can't find... No, we're not doing it. We're not doing this. <laughs> no. <laughs> Questions. <laughs> Claire, will you please ask our first question? I'm broken. I'm okay. sorry. I'm so, broken. While Amanda's been broken, we obviously read your bio and are not creepy stalkers. Yes, we are. It's really available information on the internet. So we know you were a film journalist. I have no doubt read many of your articles because I used to be subscribed to a lot of entertainment magazines. How biographical is Laura and do you have any confessions to make? Are you secretly a child star, a star and, you know, you have to come out as a serial killer? If you need to do so, you can just wink at appropriate <laughs> times. Because only our patrons will see... Audio, uh, with, it's an audio it's an audio medium it's a blind medium but the patreons will know okay. but they're our friends so it's fine it's fine they won't turn so you. i'll do this perfect <laughs> <laughs> no i um actually i don't yeah i i was on tv as a kid because i was on a game show called cross combat um which was like a very low budget single season thing that was on itv and it was basically like a human version of noughts and crosses so you had like a a you know a, a big board on the on the floor and you used your body like twister to do to form a line of noughts or crosses and it was like two teams and then 
whoever won the game got a head start on the assault course. Um, so it was it was fun. I was not expecting an assault course to come. Yeah, there's a whole assault course at the course end of well. this board game. It's like yeah, a, I know. It's like a mini version of Gladiators. <laughs> it was. It was like a shit version of Funhouse. <laughs> you know, there weren't really God, any I prizes. That. I think I won a I won a bike, which was obviously amazing. Um, and yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. So somewhere, my dad has a videotape of me, tiny little me, being eleven years old on TV, um, mispronouncing Watership Down because I'd never heard of it. And so when there was the question that was like, what's the book about the bunnies that all go crazy and kill each other? Um, we had to confer with our teammates. And my teammate said, Watership Down. And I had to answer because I was a captain. And I said, Watership Town. Um, <laughs> but they still gave it to us. So who's laughing? <laughs> we were. <laughs> you got um, the bike, so. Yeah. I got the bike. Um, yeah. is this I, was, I, I thought you were going to say Nightmare, by the way, when you said Game Show. I was hoping you were going to say oh, Nightmare. That would have been cool. Cross Combat wasn't cool. <laughs> nightmare was cool. Can we find yeah. Cross Combat anywhere? Oh, I'm, God. I'm looking imagine at, if I'm it's on YouTube. one image of it on UK Game Shows, and it's just literally one picture. Ah, uh, yeah. I, don't, I feel like there are no surviving tapes. It was just so low budget, so rubbish. Yeah. They didn't have the cheerleaders. Didn't have the cheerleaders. I forget who the presenter was, but he was very... He was all right. He was quite plastic. Vince Henderson. Vince Henderson. Henderson. This yeah. Game show. Never heard of it. Can't, couldn't even tell you what that person is. I like... I've actually got the... Um, in my diary from 1996, oh, which is the only year I kept a diary. It's amazing. Um, I do have the letter that was my acceptance letter. I wonder if I can find it. Oh, here we go. Today I see, received this letter telling me that I've been chosen to go on the Cross Combat TV show. And there's the letter. Oh! That's so cool. It's just a letter. But it was very exciting. I just yeah. love that you have it. Okay. I, you're a child I also, star. You're a washed up child actor. Yeah, I actually am. I didn't even realise until are. we had that question. Oh my god, this is so much more biographical. Right, okay, so now do you want to confess to the murders? Wait. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, but yeah, but like in terms of like the journalism stuff, that definitely that hugely influenced the book. There are so many things in the book that are just little pieces that are things that I experienced, like like going to stay in a posh hotel that was kind of a bit eerie at night because you're alone in like an enormous hotel room in a strange city, quite spooky. Um, super chatty and friendly PRs, love them, brilliant. Um, creepy movie studios. And then Beverly the Psychic was inspired by uh, Laura Warren. <gasps> Sorry, Lorraine Warren. Lorraine. Laura Warren's my character. Um, who's the psychic from yes. The Conjuring? She's played by Vera Farmiga. Um, I met her in like 2013 or something, went to her That's house so cool. um, so cool. to report on the true story behind The Conjuring. So yeah, That's when cool. I met her, I was just fascinated by how much she seemed to believe in the paranormal and she believed in ghosts and that she went into haunted houses and she helped people, but she was never scared because she felt that, the, you know, that she was protected by her faith. Um, and I found her so interesting that I thought one day I'm going to write a book that involves a, a psychic who's involved in filmmaking in some way. Um, and that's how eventually I got to Beverly. Oh, that's so, cool. so yeah, lots of little things from, from real life in there. That's nice. amazing. Yeah. You stopped talking. <laughs> yeah, that was that was just a, that was a really good story. Sorry. <laughs> it's just so <laughs> such a diverse like life isn't it like so interesting from us i mean obviously you lived it so you can't you, you know oh it was freaking awesome like i don't i think that i i was working in the last gasp of really exciting journalistic possibilities you know i was sent to the set of game of thrones i was sent to um what other sets i was like i went to the 300 
Rise of an Empire set in Sofia in Bulgaria, which was freaking amazing. Like all these really cool things that we got to do um, when there was more money flying around in the industry. Whereas now, I mean, I haven't done a set visit in a long, long time, just because like budgets have been slashed so mercilessly yeah. that there are very few opportunities to do that anymore, which is really sad. Um, but yeah, at the time was just like, this is my life. This is unbelievable. That Loved is amazing. It. Why fly you to Prague when we can just do a Zoom call? Yeah. That's yeah. Well, yeah, there is that as well. Totally. Yeah. Dumb question about visiting sets. Which is the best craft service that you've ever experienced? Um, probably um, Independence Day 2. Oh, I'm sorry. Resurgence. <laughs> yeah. Which I was, I was so sure that film was going to be a masterpiece because the sets were amazing. I went up to this room that was full of all the artwork. It was all over the walls, storyboards, artwork. It looked absolutely amazing. Great food. Um, I was in the, I went, I was in the, um, the line to get food and Jeff Goldblum walked past me and was like, mm, yeah, you, you definitely kind of look like um, Paul Bettany. And I was like, I was obviously, um, I had hair then. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was that was a really, really cool set visit, and obviously the film turned out to be absolute garbage. <laughs> it happens. It happens. It's yeah, it's fine. Still love the first one. Oh, perfect film. Okay, speaking of other movies, what's your favorite Winona Ryder movie? Because obviously Winona is very, very important in *Burn the Negative*. And in and... everyone's hearts and lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's, it's a really difficult one because she's got such a great um, CV, you know. I think <laughs> Heather's obviously is the iconic, just such a great character, such a great film. She's got so many amazing lines. Um, like when she says, Dear Diary, my teen, my teen angst bullshit has a body count. Like just, I love it. It's so, so good um so probably heathers but i think maybe later years girl interrupted doesn't get enough love i don't mm. think and maybe mm. it's because she's kind of overshadowed by people like Brittany murphy who's just absolutely heartbreaking in that film yeah and obviously angie um and claire duval i think she's in that and she's really good in it as well so yeah it's a tough one but i it's between those two how about you Um, I don't know if I... Heather's, yes. I freaking love Heather's. So good. I just, it's part of us that wants to be really stereotypical and say Beetlejuice, obviously. No, you can't do that. <sighs> oh, is that because that's yours? <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm choosing Alien Resurrection. Oh my god, I love Alien Resurrection. I love all of the Alien movies and, you know, throw Winona Ryder in. Yeah, she's the only. She's one of the few redeeming features about Alien Resurrection. But I'm sorry, really, I really, love okay. I love her, their relationship. I love it when um, Ripley is like, "You're the new asshole model they're bringing out." Like, <laughs> I love that. Um, I love their like queer coded relationship. It's brilliant. Yes. So good. You see, I'm a little upset actually with you, Amanda. Not Why? the fact that you picked Res Alien Resurrection. <laughs> Why are you? That's one thing you missed quite clearly one of the most important roles she's ever ever done and that's as mean and murray in bram stalker's black dracula i mean I, I feel like it would i feel like that would have been a stereotypical response from me all vampires oh. all the time i know and i am gary oldman's dracula but <laughs> she's cosplayed him more than once oh i please, see Literally. please see the video that if we tell Amy McCaw, she'll share that that video again. Oh, great! There's a terrible. I made a terrible, terrible it's not TikTok. Terrible. It's, it's magnificent. The, it's one of the best things I've ever done. So you, I saw you the dressed... five minute uncut version. <laughs> Do you have the top hat and the mustache and the little tiny glasses? Yeah, uh huh. I made oh, the glasses. Amazing. You need to just. You need to just go and find it. I mean, I feel like we should take like a. Like a, like a send a link. We'll send a link. We'll send a link. Yeah, yeah we will. It's fine. 
But I feel so like that's I'm, stereotypical of me if I were to if I were to say that, and that's not fair. Also, I, I really I'm, liked her in Mr. Deeds, which who even likes Mr. Mm-hmm. Deeds? Me. But that was yeah. a good one. Yeah, but it's been a while since I watched it, but I do remember liking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I cannot remember this. And she also in Black Swan, she's great. Yes. She's like she's washed up in that. She's like the washed yeah. up ballerina who's been oust, yeah. ousted. Yeah. Oh, she's great. And she's scary also as well. Really great in Stranger Things. Yes. Why are we not talking about Frank and Weenie? Joyce. No, not Joyce. What's it? Is she called Joyce? Joyce. Yeah, she's Joyce. Yeah, yeah Joyce. You, but yeah, you Frank, and Weenie. Love Frank and Weenie. Because that's really good. Yeah. She's got the perfect career. You know, how yeah. many actors could you just reel off all these amazing films? Yeah, that they've and done? they're all different. Yeah. She's Sometimes got she's range. blonde. She does have range. She's got range. Yeah. I sent her a copy of the book. Um, because I felt like it would be a bit weird if I didn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> all I do is talk about how great you are. So I think I should maybe make sure it's okay. <laughs> I didn't Did you... hear it back. Oh, do you want to? I bet yeah. I dedicate this book to you. I'm not trying to be a creepy stalker or anything, but you're in it a lot. I love you lords. <laughs> That. What That's would much would, what, I said. what would Winona do? I actually do have this tattooed on my person. Do you? No. Oh. <laughs> you do. You wrote it into your story. This yeah. is also, you know, because this is a biography. <laughs> you have done yeah. this. For the secret Winona tattoo. Yes. We're changing your life right now. My whole back is just her face. <laughs> You have to admit, you have to admit, if somebody like came up to you and was like, I've got your face tattooed on me, <laughs> and it's never a good version, is it? It's, it's never, never good. There's no, there's no true artistry to it. It's like it's like a three-year-old's done it. <laughs> They're always creepy. They're always creepy. You're kind of going to go, yeah, yeah. Security! <laughs> yeah. We've got crimes against art here. <laughs> I feel unsafe. Strange <laughs> danger, strange danger. <laughs> but, but look, look, I've got your entire person. Start stripping off. Like, whoa. Oh, yeah. If anybody comes up to you and says, I've got your face tattooed on my on, on my body. Again, it's like socks in bed, red flag. I'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry you have to, I have to look at the mirror and see this every day. I don't get a choice, but you have a choice. <laughs> you know. Well, if it's on your back, you don't see really? your back all that often. No, but there's always that. But why? Question. Why? why? Yeah. But why? Permanent. <laughs> okay. Anywho. So we talked about Winona <laughs> movies. So what's your favorite scary movie? Because obviously, it's spooky season. Showgirls, absolutely frightening. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> it's so scary. <That's... laughs> I think Scream. I, I love Scream to the to the end of the earth and back. But I've probably watched I Know What You Did Last Summer more. Because I've always got I've always got more of a thing for like the underdog. So yeah. like with Buffy and Charmed, I fucking love Buffy, but Charmed was the thing that really imprinted on me. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. But then recently, Urban Legend, which, I, which, I, which I've always loved, Urban Legend has really grown on me. Thank I was going to ask you about that because I read your interview that you did with the um, Los Angeles Public Library. And you talk mm. about Urban Legend in that interview. And I was like, oh, my God, I love him already because yeah. I love Urban Legend. I Urban Legend is getting enough love. It's such a great mystery. Like... Scream is a great mystery. I know what you did last summer is quite a good mystery, but it's it's quite difficult to follow at times. Urban Legend is like a really good mystery. It's basically impossible to figure out the killer until the last half an hour, I think. There is one more horror movie that Amanda and I always have to check that people have watched and oh, give it yeah. due appreciation. Uh huh. And if you haven't, then your homework is to go and educate yourself. Yes. The Frighteners with Michael J. Fox. Yes. <gasps> See, he knows what it is. Rated completely. It's amazing. We knew, we knew he would. Have we knew he knew would. Him. I know. I've done my homework. I've not seen it in a long, long, long time. But 
I know I loved it and I need to rewatch it. Yeah. And we well, that's our Halloween night rewatch. We've already booked that in. Oh, nice. Yeah. I Maybe also I'll don't think Halloween. 13 Ghosts gets enough love. Oh, I love 13 Ghosts. <laughs> but I love Matthew Lillard. <laughs> he's just... Yeah. He's really good, isn't it? I saw that for the first time this year. Was it this year? I do a um, point horror film club on Instagram with right. um, Shelley Toy. Yeah. Who does the point horror book club as well. Um, and we did 13 Ghosts and it was just such a funny chat because that film is crazy. <laughs> Absolutely bonkers. I love that movie. Yeah. What's the one with the tire, Amanda, that we, we always go on about? Rubber? Rubber, yes. Rubber, with, yes. Rubber's like very, tire. very good. Um, I mean, if we're going to go down that route, I love teeth. Yes. With I mean, the, the vagina dentata. <laughs> yeah, it's not a film. It's just my personality <laughs> as I like I teeth. mean, I do love teeth. I do. Yeah. I have... Please again see the jar of teeth back there. I have... That was a fun day at the library getting them 3D printed. And That's the, the very girl, impressive. she just brings me this. She's like, "Here's your teeth. <laughs> They're all done." <laughs> it's a pile of teeth. Did she think you were going to put them into your actual head? <laughs> no, because these are fucking giant. They're like this big. Oh, okay. <laughs> One day you'll okay. fulfill your Wilma Finstone yeah. cosplay and do the bone teeth. I do yeah. have a tooth uh, bracelet. I'm not currently wearing it, but I do have one. They're not real teeth. It's fine. We can pretend. We can. I feel like you're protesting slightly too much as well. I feel like they, they are real. It's it's for, you know, if it's on the internet it's for everything. You kind of got to get those caveats in. You've got to get those disclosures. You just yeah. have to say it out loud. For law just, enforcement, please yeah. don't focus on Amanda's shifty eyes. She's been winking at me this whole time. <laughs> she unfortunately has all the uh, the master copies of the recording, so she can press delete. It's true. Easier. That's true. I am the editor, so I well I've, I've got that power. God's gonna wear it again. Okay, so we've talked scary movies, but this is a book podcast. What you is it scary? though? But is is it, it though? Is it <laughs> not in October? We we do anything. What's your favorite scary book? I'm oh, I'm so bad at favorites because I just it depends so much on what kind of day I'm having. But okay, what what scary book are you feeling at the moment? Um, where is it? I want to show it to you. Um. So this is a book that I've been yelling about to everybody. <clears throat> Came out this year from Tall Night Fire, and it is Maeve yes! Fly by C.J. Yeah, Reed. Gonna, we're going to be talking about that one soon. It's yes. so freaking good. It's really unsettling, but also hilarious and gripping. Um, it's about, it's sort of like a Disneyland princess serial killer which is genius yeah. um, and I just think it's so 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 good and I think it's going to win tons of awards and just go, kind of go on to be this classic of the genre deservedly so because it is brilliant yes and you know this because you are a psychic <sighs> what about you guys yeah Claire what's your favorite scary book right now because everyone already automatically knows my answer to this question and if you don't you need to enjoy more fictional hangover do you know what I'm surrounded by them at the moment and I've just gotten book mail today as well. <sighs> Especially the audio. Well, while you're digging, I will talk about The Dead House by Don Kurtigich because everyone knows that I'm obsessed with Don Kurtigich. Even Don Kurtigich knows that I am obsessed with Don Kurtigich, <laughs> so it's fine. That's because you go down... You, 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 I mean, if she wasn't such a lucky person, you'd probably be on some kind of watch list. She is shifty lovely. Eyes. Yeah, I met her for the first man. time this year, and she is like, yeah, the loveliest person. I love her, especially. And that book, that book is brilliant. Yeah. It's so good. It's so beautiful. I love all of the weird pieces of things that are in there. I love an epistolary style novel. Everyone knows this about me. But the audiobook produced by Elise Green, mwah, it's the most beautiful thing. Mm. I, I still love the fact that it's Elise Green doing the candle blow out i know that was such a cool we we interviewed her because um <clears throat> i don't know if you can tell i'm obsessed so yeah i got it yeah i can really tell 
She yeah. keeps her, she kept her cool quite well for about two seconds and then went crazy. <laughs> but um, she did have the book in arm's reach <laughs> at all times. <laughs> Cooking the kitchen, got the book. It's, it's in yeah. my bag. It's in my bag of trick treats at the moment for when we're doing <laughs> the the video later on. Uh, I'm gonna go. Oh. oh god, Harold Lake is so good. I still think so about good. it. I adore it. I mean, I mean, come on, I've got a Mr. Jitters. <sighs> it's I... great. It's so good. As much as I love Harold Lake, which I do love so so much, I liked Bird and Falls better. Excuse me, British version, Wicked Little Deeds. I'm sorry, I <laughs> love Wicked Little Deeds. <laughs> I have both of them. It's fine. I do as well. So I've got the second ones in my bag. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually good. agree. I I think I I think that um, Wicked Little Deeds has the edge, very slight edge. Yeah, yeah. Well, it just I really had liked that, that book. It had that twist that like you yeah. didn't see coming at all. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Now you just made Dead Eyed Sadie's head bloat. She's all excited by it now. Oh, she is amazing. She is. And Dead-Eyed Sadies, I mean, and Mr. Jitters, like they're both such great names for baddies. Oh, they are. <clears throat> they feel iconic. Like, um, they feel like you've heard them before, but... That's why I appreciated happen. The Needle Man, because I was again... about to say, excuse me, The Needle yeah. Man? <laughs> That's the best. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I love this, like, it's at the very beginning, not when she's in the airplane, but like the the needles like coming around the door frame i was like oh mm. oh i can see it oh i love it oh i love it so much so that was my freddy moment that was my little nod to <sighs> mr freddy krueger which which of those movies is your favorite if you don't say the third one you're wrong <laughs> <laughs> well my brain did go the third one immediately but then i was like where's craven's new nightmare as a masterpiece i love that one too oh my God, yeah. my husband and I were just having this conversation the other day. We love the third one, but I love New Nightmare. It's New so Nightmare good. just has so many layers to it, and it's got like something sort of political to say a little bit as well about the state of horror and um, like you know, it's, it's a total precursor to Scream. It basically encapsulates like Billy's argument in Scream, where he says, "Psycho movies don't create psychos; they make psychos more creative." Yeah. Like Wes had already done that in Wes Craven's New Nightmare. So yeah, it's it's brilliant. I loved all of his movies. I'm so sad that he is no longer with us creating fantastic masterpieces. Yeah. It's a loss. Didn't yeah. Freddy Krueger go space? Uh <laughs> no, it's Jason. Jason is in space. Jason. Jason X. Jason X. Jason is Jason goes. Does to one space. of them fight a leprechaun? Um, what am I thinking of leprechauns in space? Yeah. I don't, I don't know that there's a crossover with, with Freddy or Jason and the leprechaun. There is, you know, the Freddy and Jason crossover, which involves yeah. the fantastic pelvic thrusting pinball scene. Yeah. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I love it. Um, and Kelly Rowland acting her heart out. She tried real hard. <laughs> and um, what's her face from Dawson's Creek? Um, the bad friend. Jen's friend. Monica Breen? Is that her name? I've never watched Dawson's Creek. Sorry. I didn't watch Dawson's ah. Creek either. Oh my god. Is that I mean, our homework? We were going to yes. make you watch The Frighteners. I don't season want to one of, that Season one and two of Dawson's Creek. And try and figure out I mean, you might know this already because it's sort of in, in, enshrined in pop culture lore, but try to figure out who the fans hated the most in the show. Okay. And then, then we'll talk. <laughs> okay. 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 I feel like um, we need to confess as well that if we're talking about people, people that we hate, <laughs> Amanda found some great background information in the same interview for the library about oh. you trying to make Amy sympathetic. Uh, oh, you, you failed. Yeah. You failed at that, friend. She was the worst character. Oh, wow. We freaked well, you, <laughs> you should have read the first draft. <laughs> she was even worse. Oh. We do talk a lot in, in lots of other episodes about how it's really, like, it's it's the mark of a great writer to write someone that you, like, so viscerally hate. So, again... 
Good job. Oh, thanks. Because well, I I think I failed because I tried to make her more likable. You like, really, you did fail in work. that. Yeah. But she's still a fantastically terrible character. Oh. And you cheer when she's murdered, which is you know, you do. That's goals. Yeah. 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 She was a she was sort of a, a bit of an idiot at the end. Has to be said. How she could have learned. She didn't learn from the experience she at all. Not. She did not learn at all. But how how is she worse? Can you can you answer that question? How did she was worse. She was less apologetic. Less apologetic. Uh, she was less sort of like. Um, there was just less of a connection between her and Laura. There wasn't so much of that sibling. Um, sort of like one-upmanship or, or tension. There was more just outright hatred, essentially. Oh. So I had I kind of built up their their relationship quite a lot, and things like when she says, "Yeah, well, I'm in love with the reality of you," like things like that. That was a good like line. Added in. But I didn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Everything it was... that came out of Amy's mouth was completely disingenuous. Shut up. Oh. Just shut up. <laughs> shut up, Amy. Yeah, I actually fun. I said I said to Amanda because I started reading it before she did but she managed to finish it before I did I said I want to write down the villain's name on a piece of paper and put an envelope to prove because until we both read it we can't we don't talk about it to each other unless it's like just ah and we know um, but I actually thought Amy and Michael working together in mm. that reality TV twist where they were coming in a two prong attack to get Laura to kind of like admit to being Polly, to being part of the documentary and the news articles and stuff because Zeppelin magazine was actually going to be closed down and they needed this big win or something like that. And then Mike was actually going to help Amy break into Hollywood because obviously he had contacts and, oh, they were fucking. I kind of thought that they were. I really did. Yeah. Because they wouldn't put it past me because Amy was so terrible. Yeah. That's a really solid theory. I I would definitely have read that book for sure. That that was my theory, and then you know, as it was going through, it was actually like, no, 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 no. Laura's the murderer. Yeah. Is she the murderer? Yeah, she's Is actually a murderer. Real? And then we have obviously, you know, in the main episode of the podcast, then me and Amanda have a discussion about reality <laughs> <laughs> such as it is. Such as it is. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, I kind of. I was never going to have a non-supernatural ending. I was nervous about that because I knew that some people might be expecting more of a straightforward real world thriller. Um, so I've I, all the way through writing the book, releasing the book, I've been very um, sort of expecting certain people not to like the ending. So I'm not surprised that some people didn't. But I think that if you didn't see at least something supernatural coming then you weren't reading the book that i wrote because there is a lot of stuff way stuff way up front that basically says there's some weird shit going on here guys you know so it's it's i mean everyone reads things differently but for me it was just really obvious that there was some supernatural stuff going on here but you did not realize that you wrote the hero you yeah, did not I didn't realize know that, that the needle man. <laughs> you didn't realize it was a found family story <laughs> about the needle man and Polly Laura finding yeah. each other. Yeah, you know, there's a whole guardian angel. Like you didn't, you didn't realize. It's really wholesome. That's what you did. It's so wholesome. <laughs> wholesome horror. It's good for the soul. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask my publisher to put that on the cover next time. Next time it's printed. Oh, yes. Wholesome horror, fictional hangover. <laughs> yes. 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 Oh man, so good. Okay, I feel like we've kept you for like entirely too long. So much longer no, than no. I ever said that we were gonna keep you. You can hear the um, red wine calling. Josh, yeah, yeah Josh, you can. You can have a double. <laughs> a double um, wine. Yes, a double wine. <laughs> double wine. Just one double... in each hand. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, is there anything else that you are excited about that you want to tell us? Like any anything, like book related or not, it doesn't matter. Just tell us something that you're excited about. Okay, film related. 
if you're in the UK, which I suspect only half of you are, um, Netflix, 26th of October, I think, uh, the film Talk to Me is landing. Yes! I, I love that movie. Have you have you seen it as well? I love it. I saw it in the theater. I love that movie. It's so good. So good. And I'm stunned that it's going to be on Netflix within three months of it being in cinemas. Yeah. But... I just I'm so happy I didn't get a chance to see it, and I'm so happy. Oh, you it's have fantastic. to tell me. You have to tell me if you love it as much as I did. I suspect I'm going to freaking love it. I was just talking about this movie the other day, and in my head, I always call it "Talk to the Hand," but that's, that's not what, what I call it as well. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a hand on every post. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I'm so glad that you love that movie, man. Brilliant! I can't wait to watch it again. Yeah. Why don't Why don't um, I get it? Do I get it? You might already have you it. Might, you might do. All I know is that on UK Netflix, it says coming soon and it's 26th of October. I put the reminder on. Yeah. <laughs> give me notification. Please I think tell me when we're you want to. We're going to do like a movie marathon on the weekend beforehand. Because we were going to go to the the local cinema does an all, uh, horror movie all nighter, but the selection's not great this um. year. They've got two screens. Out of four screens, half of them, two full screens, are all mystery movies. And I'm like, well, oh. no. Mm. I like to know I'm going to watch them. I don't mind the odd mystery, but not yeah. two screens worth. So we're just going to do our own. And I think that's awesome. what we've planned in to watch that. Talk to the hand. <laughs> Talk to the hand. So yeah, because the face ain't listening. <laughs> the face is being murdered. <laughs> <laughs> What about, so is there anything fantastic. that you've got that you want to shout about for yourself? Um, okay, two things. One, the audiobook of Burn the Negative is so good. a masterpiece. Like yes. Stephanie Cannon is the narrator and she's turned the book into something way better than I wrote. Oh, you know, she's acted it out to insane levels. It's fantastic. So I really recommend the audiobook. Um, we always recommend then... audiobooks. That's yeah. our favorite thing. Oh, cool. Yeah, awesome. Um, and then next July, my next horror book is out. It's uh, very different to Burn the Negative, but also quite similar. <laughs> Found it's like family. Same but different in the. Uh, yeah, yeah. Guardian wholesome, Angel Wholesome, wholesome horror. horror. Wholesome Horror. It's all neat. Well, I do. I do seem to have, so it also has a yoga scene in it. I don't know what's happened, but I do seem to be doing like holistic horror um, because oh. there's obviously a yoga scene in Burn the Negative as well. Yes. Um, but yeah, so that's coming out next July, end of next July. Okay. And then you will, yeah. of course, be joining us again when we talk about it. Absolutely. Yes? Because you're part of our family now, whether you like oh. it or not. <laughs> Let me out of here. No. I'm sorry. We're not Please. creepy at all. We just stalk you. <laughs> In the legal way, because it's on the internet. <laughs> if you haven't got a tattoo of either me or the book, <laughs> next time we meet, I'm going to have words. Fair. That's fair. I need to make a note. <laughs> yeah. Note to self. Note to self. <laughs> Get scary body art. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And also, and obviously, I'll guns. reciprocate. I'll do the same thing. Please Thank do. You. But there's two of you, so I'm gonna have more tattoos. But... Just like one on each shoulder, maybe. Yeah. Or like, like your, you like just your move pecs. your shoulders back as if we're talking. <laughs> oh yeah. Now that how makes it better for the pecs. I don't know. How though. do you feel about that? I don't know. <laughs> oh, we're like the devil and the angel on your shoulders. Yeah. Yes. The guardian. Except angel. both of us are going. Do it. Do, do it. it. <laughs> do it. Do it for the lols. <laughs> Yes. It'll be like yeah. a ghost on one shoulder and a serial killer on the other shoulder. Uh huh. Yes. I choose serial killer. I Claire choose is a ghost. Yeah. Great. Okay. Perfect. That's <laughs> sorted then. That's okay. Simple. All right. I don't know how there could be a more perfect ending to an episode of our podcast. <laughs> Slash. Don't know how to end that episode. <laughs> fine it's fine okay thank you so much for joining us and spending entirely too much time with us i'm not sorry about that even though i kind of am um tell everyone where they can find you on social media or in real life for stalking purposes 
Uh, I'm on Twitter or X, whatever the hell it's called, at Josh Winning. I don't really go on there anymore, but I do sometimes. So, uh, Instagram, I'm Joshua Winning. My website is joshuawinning.com. And in real life, I live in um, America somewhere. Oh, okay. So you're I actually... Don't live in America. Damn it! <laughs> You're actually closer to me for once. <laughs> how, how about we'll just say for contact in real life, subscribe to your newsletter. Yeah, yeah, that, is that totally. And sure. not be a creepy, creepy creep. Amanda, it's... stop being a creepy creep. Fine. Stop it. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry about any of this. Okay. Oh my God, you're the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So that's it for this bonus episode of Fictional Hangover. I'm Amanda. And I'm Claire. Join us next time as we discuss Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Weir. Look out for our Would You Rather polls on social media. Don't forget about our book club and monthly challenges on Facebook. Be sure to visit our shop on Redbubble at fictionalhangover.redbubble.com for all your favorite <laughs> fictional hangover themed merchandise. And become a patron of ours on Patreon at patreon.com slash fictional hangover. Until next time, remember, the only cure for a fictional hangover is another book. You can find us at fictionalhangover.com. Follow us on Instagram, threads, TikTok and YouTube at Fictional Hangover. And find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fictional hangover. If you like this episode, check out our others and be sure to rate, review and subscribe so you don't miss out. And finally, special thanks to Liz Emerson for our music. You can find her on Facebook and Patreon. Thanks for listening. <laughs>